Nestled between a state of pure zen and rhythmic chaos lies Thumper. And now, it's available for Nintendo Switch. Thumper made a name for itself last fall on PlayStation VR with a mix of pounding percussion and haunting visuals. It left a strong impression for those that strapped on the headset, that's for sure. But Thumper was also playable on a standard television. And on PlayStation 4 Pro at least, it even delivered a native 4K presentation at 60 frames per second. With such a high quality release available on the PlayStation 4 then, we were excited to see how developer Drool would translate Thumper over to the Nintendo Switch. Could it make the jump without any compromises? Let's find out. So first off, when dealing with a game like Thumper, we need to talk about input latency. Minimal input latency is just about a requirement for the full enjoyment of a game like this. It's one of the reasons why Thumper was so effective on PSVR. There was no detectable input latency there to spoil the experience. When playing on a TV, this could prove hit or miss depending on your model of display. In fact, in capturing the game, it was impossible to enjoy piped in through our capture card due to the extra leg, so I had to play on the TV. What does this have to do with Switch then? Well, more than anything, it's a reference to the game's portable mode. You can play Thumper in handheld mode with no extra latency. Now, most TVs should be able to handle the game reasonably well in game mode, but eliminating those extra milliseconds is a big deal, and alongside the PSVR and PC VR versions, the Switch now offers a leg-free experience in portable mode regardless of your external display. And Thumper makes for an amazing portable game too. Slap on some headphones and pull the screen right up to your face and it's easy to get lost. You get a razor sharp native resolution of 720p on the screen at a rock solid 60 frames per second. No matter how much rhythm violence comes your way, Thumper never flinches. The immersion factor isn't quite on par with the VR version of course, but it's easier to sink into than you might think. It also looks pretty awesome on the Switch's 6 inch LCD and the camera is slightly tweaked to improve portable play. So how about the docked experience then? Well, Thumper works here too, provided your display is fast enough to handle it smoothly. The TV I'm using, for instance, offers response numbers below 30 milliseconds in game mode, which feels pretty good, but switching over to one of the movie modes, for instance, doubles the input latency, making for a much more frustrating time. Still, the important thing here is that it's bumped up to a full native 1080p and it still runs at 60 frames per second without any additional dips or hitches. It's 100% locked here, which is absolutely critical for a game like Thumper. But even with its deceptively simple visuals, it's not always easy to bring a game over like this to less capable hardware, especially when attempting to deliver great image quality. And Thumper does deliver a beautiful presentation, with some of the best anti-aliasing we've ever seen on the Switch. Edges are sharp and clean and it just looks excellent during gameplay. But if you look a little closer, the presentation isn't quite on par with what we've seen on PlayStation 4. While the curving, metallic, nightmarish structures stretching off into the distance are fully retained here, many of the effects have gone missing. On PlayStation 4 we see a heavy reliance on things like motion blur and chromatic aberration throughout the game. And yes, I get it, chromatic aberration isn't always viewed in the most positive light, but in Thumper it works extremely well with the art direction for the game. And the same goes for motion blur really, which helps enhance the effect of the swirling nightmare within. It just looks really smooth on a PlayStation 4, or a PC for that matter. When played on the Switch then, all of these effects are completely absent as you can see here in this video. Motion blur and chromatic aberration are gone, and you can spot subtle changes in the shading. And yes, it seems like they had to be disabled in the name of frame rate, but Thumper does still manage to look pretty good on the Switch. In fact, when I first played it, I didn't even realize that these effects were missing at all until I pulled up the game on the other console. The more important thing here is that the frame rate never wavers, no matter how many particles fill the screen, so it still looks really good in motion. And aside from those missing effects, the full Thumper experience is retained. And that includes the audio.
This is one game where you're going to want either an absolutely killer sound system or a high quality pair of headphones. The deep bass of the audio has to be experienced this way. You can of course play it through the Switch's own internal speakers, but you'd be sacrificing a lot of the experience in doing so, so I don't recommend it. Oh, and regardless of which controller you're using to play the game, the implementation of HD Rumble here is absolutely excellent and definitely adds something to the game. It's a big step up from the Rumble you get in the DualShock 4 and Xbox One controller. Really though, that's just about all there is to say on the matter. Drool has delivered a really good port of Thumper on the Nintendo Switch. It certainly looks the part and it runs flawlessly. While some visual compromises had to be made in translating the game to Nintendo's hardware, it's really not something you're going to notice unless you play the two back to back. And in fact, if you play the game in VR, these effects are absent anyways, as they can contribute to things like motion sickness. And while we're talking about VR, I have to say, the VR experience is still the best way to enjoy Thumper, but really, the Switch version manages to hold its own. It's really an audiovisual treat, and well worth checking out regardless of the platform. And while covering yet another Switch release, it made me step back and consider the fact that if you look at the games available on the system right now, the majority of them are 60 frames per second. An unexpected but awesome trend, and it's great to see Thumper join the party. But with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you found it useful and interesting, be sure to let us know by liking, subscribing, and following us on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.